We welcome you back to Antwerp, Belgium, here at the Creline FIBA 3X3 World Cup 2022. Kyle Montgomery, a.k.a. The Voice, here with you. We've had our first session break. We've had some, uh, some exciting action to start day two here from the main city square here in the Flanders region. And the, ga the day is going to continue, and, and you know it's just going to turn up as the day goes on. B and C are in action today, both men and women. A and D were in action yesterday. <laughs> We got 18 total games and our first look at the 2019 runner-ups at the World Cup and Olympic gold medalist team Latvia, who have a little surprise for um, many of you who didn't, who probably weren't expecting Batman to return, but Batman is here. You will see shortly after we introduce this Chinese team, China, who uh, got off to not a rough start. I wouldn't call it a rough start, but they played well against the Netherlands, but they just didn't have enough in the end. Dimes took control, and Jesse Vaughn and company ended up pulling away from uh, China, who were well represented at the Tokyo Olympic Games just a summer ago. They got two Olympians on this team. And uh, here they are, right in front of us, rocking the white uniforms this time instead of the red. Henan Li and Ping Yan, both the uh, Olympians. They lead this core of four. And they'll try to pull off an upset against Artur Strelniks. Mr. Muscle. Love Artur's game. He is an extremely good complimentary player. Does what they need. Batman returns. What? Yes. Carlos Lasmanis is back in a Latvian uniform. We have not seen him on the Pro Tour this year. Uh, that's because he signed a contract to play with the league that we don't talk about around these parts. That's owned by a former member of the uh, NWA. He's <laughs> linked back up with his partner in crime. I don't call him Robin anymore. I call him the Maze. Norse Miezis. A premier player, hey, long, I mean, I think he hasn't gotten enough credit uh, for just how talented okay, he is. Former number one, the Maze has been leading the way for Team Riga on the Pro Tour this year. Here's our officials leading the way. Marcos Mikilaitis. Mikilaitis. Marcos, please forgive me for miss saying your name. I apologize, man. Help me out. <laughs> All right, so there's Hayden Lee, the 22-year-old Olympian. He's, he's all set to go, and there's that guy right there, the maze, Norris Miezis. He's ranked uh, number five in the world. He spent some time as world number one. He's the one of the most dynamic players in all the 3x3. He will cross your legs off, believe it. And uh, as I said before, Batman returns. And I ain't talking about no Michael Keaton, the only Batman that 3X3 recognizes, Carlos Las Manas. He's signed a deal. And again, he's playing in, a, in a, an American league and playing his rookie season with the Aliens, joining up with Dushan Bullet, 3X3 GOAT. And uh, 
actually just left Chicago a couple days ago. Caught a flight here because a World Cup gold medal is the only thing that Las Manas is missing. He's a European champion. Obviously, he's MVP and, and led Latvia to that iconic and legendary gold medal at the Olympic Games just a summer ago. Now he's back in Burgundy with Latvia across his chest. I know the Latvian fans got big smiles on their faces right now as Batman and formerly known as Robin, they team up. There he is, the maze, two-piece, no biscuit. He gets it started, <laughs> and then he's going to get a breather. Not that he needs a rest, but Strelnik's will check in. They got their own substitution strategy. Team Latvia, they come in as the three seed, and uh, we saw him win gold at the Europe Cup 2017. Now, remember, Mieza still had braces at that time. They look, it was totally different than it is now. And uh, they shocked uh, all the, the big timers. They beat Slovenia in the final. They beat Serbia on the way and with an overtime shot. And Agnes Chavars was there. They don't have Edgar Krumens who has been injured recently. So Artur Strelniks has stepped in nicely on this Latvian team. Yeah, there's nothing bigger than a gold medal as 3x3 made its debut into the Olympic Games. And uh, that makes you a legend in itself. Las Manas hit the two-piece to win it against the ROC. Las Manas does not hit the two-piece there. And he turns around and the short-range jumper is going to fall. The six-foot-seven lefty, he is a problem. Trust me. If you have not seen 3x3 before, he's one of the greats. And here is Miezis. Fakes the shot, gets it to Strelnik. Strelnik, though, took too much time, so that's a three in the key violation. We saw this Latvian team finish runners up at the 2019 World Cup, losing to the Americans, the men who won their first goal back in 2019, Robbie Hummel and, and that core. This time they want to take it a step further. They've been there. Also silver medalists at the Europe Cup 2018. Latvia has been that country that's been trying to take the stake, their claim as the best country in 3x3 and take it from Serbia, who we saw dominate for the first decade of this game's existence, which started, by the way, at the Singapore Youth Olympic Games in 2010. I'm giving you a whole history lesson. Oh. Y'all didn't see it on camera, but I just bumped heads with Julian above. We put our heads together a lot, but that's not how we want to do it. Be careful, Ju. What are you doing? <laughs> Lies money. Cruising to the cup for the easy lay. Latvia out of the gates fast. It's 4 nothing. China's got their work cut out for them. Without a question, these two teams met at the Olympic pool phase. And Latvia beat this Chinese team. Well, not, not this exact Chinese team, but two of the members on this team. Uh, beat them twice, but by only three points. They met in pool play, and they also met in the quarterfinals. 21 to 18 finishes. So make no mistake, China was not out of those contests. They were right there and had a chance. Oh, uh, did Las Vegas clear that? No, he didn't. He recognizes that. Now he officially clears it. And we have a foul on the interior. Strelnik's getting position on Lee. And that's going to draw a fourth whistle on China, who have four fouls but no points. That is not a good formula. As Miezis, he is gone with the wind. Catch the vapors. The maze. Got a hand on it. Picked his pocket like Peter Piper picks peppers. And he's going to put the cookie in the cup. Have that. China cannot respond on the two-piece out of bounds. Is that off of Latvia? I think there's a chance. China the 20 seed. This is, a, this is the definition of what you would consider a mismatch on paper. But you don't win the game on those type of lines. You, live it, you win it between the lines. The 3x3 half court. Kyle Montgomery, a.k.a. the voice of 3x3 in your ear. I'm happy to be here. 
for the seventh edition of the World Cup. First time ever from Belgium here in Antwerp. Batman. -n 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 -n. Oh, no, sir. He's not a uh, DC Comics fan, apparently. He tells Batman, get out of here. I'm a Marvel fan. Forget you. That's a foul on the shot. So Las Manis will get a chance to go back up to the stripe. This was your 2021 World Tour. That's our Pro Tour in FIBA 3X3 MVP. A premier player in our game who has decided to take his pro career out. Shot clock, front rimmed it. He missed it, and but he gets back in time, but not in good enough time to stop that layup. That's a good finish from Guo. It's 7-3 Latvia with the addition of Las Manas. All of a sudden, they become a favorite uh, to probably win gold here. I think that that immediately boost them to the top. Now, I speak a lot about Las Manas and Mies, but I don't want well, to... I'll let you know after the timeout. Apparently, we can only listen to the huddles. That's what I've been told. So I'll shut up. Listen in to the Chinese huddle. Yan, long range strike. He gets the couple to go. Lasmanis on the move. He can't get it. Yan. Chavares is fouled, and not, as I was saying, as they went into the huddle, uh, Latvia, a.k.a. Riga on the Pro Tour, they would not have the success that they've had without Agnes Chavares. He was the flag bearer at the Olympics, a, uh, a very honorable distinction, and he's the glue guy. He's the, he's the guy that makes this thing work. Consistent at the free throw line. Uh, uh, consistently among the top three rebounders in all of 3x3. And you can say what, he's, what you want to say about the way his shot looks. It is a unique release, one hand, <laughs> but he knocks him down. He and Edgar Crewmans have uh, come up huge for Riga so many times and helping them uh, develop this reputation that they have as, as an elite. They are amongst the elite of 3x3. And here they are with a 9-5 advantage over China. As Batman returns. Caught a quick flight from Chicago. He's playing for the Aliens in the league that we don't talk about because they haven't shown us the type of respect that we deserve. I'm just going to keep it real. So Las Manas, he will move left. He misses it. The maze, find me if you can. Two-piece, combo. 13-5, Latvia's putting it on the Chinese. These two met at the Tokyo Olympic Games. A win for the Latvians, two times, as I mentioned. They're the ones who ended China's campaign at the quarterfinal stage, Strelniks. He will go down to get it. Miezis, he's on the move. He puts the scoop up. He's fouled on the way up, and it is a miss. So he, Miezis and Las Manas have both shared time as the world number one. Miezis right now is the world number five, number one ranked player in Latvia. And they are uh, the cream of the crop when it comes to the Baltic nations. Miezis, not a problem at the charity strike. Cash money. It's a 10-point lead. We're halfway through. Not even that. Guo. Whoa. Missed it. Chavars will come around. He will hand it off to Batman. Batman 
He will give it back to Chavez. Teamwork making the dream work. An easy lay for AC. He's cool. See what I did there? Never mind. That's a that's a walk. Ah, thank you. <laughs> so China is all they got having all kinds of problems right now. Uh, they got eight fouls. Okay, so they're in the penalty and they're trailing by 11. I'm not exactly shocked. There's Las Manas putting it up and putting it down. Two piece is good. It's 18 to five. This is getting ugly. China has run into a Latvian buzzsaw who still have something to prove. They have not been World Cup champions as of yet. Las Manas has come back especially to earn a gold medal. As I mentioned, nothing gets bigger than the Olympics. But a European championship and also a World Tour final winner, which we saw Latvia win in 2020. Uh, he's got everything except for a World Cup gold. We're going to see if he's able to get it out here with his Latvian crew and his longtime partner in crime. They used to be rivals. Oh, look at Miesis. May I have this dance? You're going to give it to me whether you like it or not. He gets the double to go. And it's game point for Latvia in a 20 to 6 thrashing. Forget about it. This game never happened. 22 to 6. I think we still had five minutes left in the game. We shouldn't even get paid for this. <laughs> the officials that Celia Toth and Marcos Mikelaitis, they're done in five minutes. Not even, was it five minutes? How much time was left? 22 to six? Wowzers. <laughs> Wowzers. That is all she wrote. That, that wasn't even a full sentence. That's a couple of, <laughs> that was, man, you don't see it happen uh, that quickly a lot of times at 3x3, but this Latvian team is a machine. They gotta be considered one of the favorites. Defending gold from the, from the Olympics less than a year ago. Batman returns with the maze. Chavars and Strelniks. Mies has got him going with the two ball and Las Manas, he's back like he never left. The lefty finishes with the right that time. Mies is with the floater. And everybody gets a, a taste on this Latvian team. Chavars is contributing. The Chinese got tired of it for, for a moment. Played some good defense. Swatted a couple balls on the inside. But the maze, he's hard to keep up with. He'll turn you in a circle. And by the time you figure out what's happened, the game is over with. Just like that. 22 to 6. <laughs> uh, we, uh, well, we got an entertainment break that quickly? I guess so. I, I don't mind the entertainment breaks because that gives a chance for Vincent Royer to shine. The Frenchman is funny. <laughs> He's funny as heck. He definitely keeps the crowd engaged. We love him a lot. Before we get to our women's pool B action between New Zealand and France, uh, we'll, we'll let Vince do his thing, and then we'll get back to the action. Stick around. Women's pool B play coming right up. Okay, one more 
one shot. As you are a French fan, fan, I give you one more shot. Last one. We are yeah. friends. I know friends. What is the problem? No, the kids. One more chance. <laughs> Shout out to Nicola. He was shooting free throws like Shaq, but he still walked away with a t-shirt. <laughs> Shaq shot free throws pretty bad too, but he, he walked away from the game with a pretty big paycheck. So hey, look, we reward mediocrity. It doesn't matter. We it's fine. <laughs> A brief little break before again we get back to our women's action. We got five minutes actually before we get to that game officially. So I'm not going to make your ears bleed by me just yapping for the next five minutes. I'll step off the mic for just a few. We'll watch a few more of our uh, friendly, friendly fans <laughs> shoot some free throws. And we're back. We're back in five. Don't go nowhere. I will find you. I got spies. Uh, you play basketball. Oh, you play basketball. You were cheating. Almost the winning combination. Alexia, 45 seconds. You see how fast it goes. Fresh people, you always lie. You can play music with some channel if you want. Okay, Alexia, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a friend. I'm so sorry. Take your arm right now. And 30 seconds. Such a gentleman. No, I can't because my friend is broken. The gentleman français.
All right. That is what we call in the TV business a beauty shot. Isn't it beautiful? We are right here at the Grundplatz section of Antwerp, right at the city center, surrounded by history. We're going to see who makes history at this 2022 Krillin FIBA 3x3 World Cup. Look at all the faces, the fans that are here. We got a packed house here to see both the women and men compete. New Zealand looking to bounce back. They ran into an American team to start the day. They gave them some trouble. Handed them an L. But the World Cup Asia qualifier champions are back. Here they are, Julian Christina Harmon, the Olympian. Kalani Purcell, Tiana Clark, Gabriela Foto. They come out in the white, the Kiwis, looking to get it done. They want a dub. They certainly don't want to go back to the hotel. 0-2. Oh I think they're better than that, but they have got their work cut out for them. Here comes Le Blues, the French. Mep Mariev Paget, longtime international representative of France. And she's the glue that keeps the team together. She's been playing a long time with Leticia Guapo, former world number one. La Guapa is back. She's not by herself. Miriam Jekundade. She's the young new addition along with Hortense Limosin. Another youthful addition to this French team as they make some changes for the national roster this time. It uh, paid off in their first contest, a 22 to 11 win over Brazil. Now they will look to join the ranks of the unbeaten in their first pool play campaign. So I'll remind you, they're gonna play all four of the other teams in the group. So they'll have another day of pool play coming up the day after tomorrow, which is Friday. There's some love between Kalani Purcell and uh, Maria Pajain. A lot of love for our officials here, Eddie Lou and Vlad Gitar, Gitar Renu. Represent Romania and Malaysia, respectively. It's a melting pot, this 3x3 thing here in a city that's really a melting pot. So many cultures represented here in uh, Antwerp, Belgium. I'm loving it. There's Kalani Purcell. There's a lot to love about her game. She's 27 years old. She's a top-level passer. She can put the cookie in the cup, too. Leticia Guapo at 26. Man, she is still one of the top players in the game. She's going to be a top player in the game for a long time, as long as she continues to play 3x3. Um, she's got a five-on-five -five career as well in France, where she plays well. She's a star here. This is not a game that uh, France can look past easily because New Zealand has had a history of, of putting together some really talented squads. I think that their four are really good. They've got the experience of Harmon as an Olympian with uh, five on five. But you've also got, uh, got the explosive offensive ability of Tiana Clark and Fotu. Can they get it going this game? That, that's really the question at hand here. Fotu was not really finding her stroke from distance against the Americans. Now, against the French, which is, an, I think, an equally difficult task. They're going to have to find that, that stroke in this one. We find out in 10 seconds. Make that 3x3. Final three seconds of the countdown are off. Purcell takes one more sip of agua. And here she goes. Here we go. Starts from the logo down low. Harmon. She tracks down the pass. She will get it over to Clark. Clark, high arc on the shot. Rolls off the iron, out of bounds. I think that's off white. I could be wrong. It did look like Miriam got a hand on that. Purcell is certainly saying, pretending, yeah, it's, it's going to be white ball. Kiwis take over. 
Clark sets the screen. Harmon comes around, and she puts it down. Through the contact, the chance for to the hard way. Purcell checks out. Fotu checks in. Harmon again, an Olympian who competed at the London Olympic Games in basketball. We know basketball is five on five. This is 3x3 hoop. Oh, not, almost a nice setup from Nemo Sun. Grappo reaches in. Jay Kundade defends well. Clark, air. New Zealand, though, they do strike first. They're out of the gates with the 2 0 lead. Whether or not it stands, we will find out. It's a sprint to 21, 10 minutes. Guapo. No. Nemo Sun gets it, gets it back to her teammate. They won at the U23 Nations League, and they show that chemistry right off the bat. Look at that reverse attempt from Harmon, who does enough to draw the foul. She's going back up to the free throw line. She just completed a two-point play to start the game, and now she'll shoot one. Harmon, oh, she misses the charity attempt. Jekundade passes it, sets up, met, wet. Nets dripping. Here's Purcell. She's waiting for Harmon to come free. She can't get her the ball, but she's running out of time. And she gets whistled for the five second violation. That's some strong defense. We call that clamp swamp from. So Le Bleu lead it by one. I think, is that un in, in French? Un de toi? I don't know. Somebody help me. Limosan. She needs no help. She takes it to the bucket herself, and she able, she's able to earn a foul and a trip to the strike. So Hortense Limosan, 23 years old, ranked number one. In front, number 10 in the world, and she puts that drop in the bucket. Extends France's lead to just two. Purcell, great positioning. Oh, but she sold the bag. Whoa. She's moving some furniture down there. Uh, Marie Page was the sofa. Nemo Song off target on the lefty hook. She might be in trouble. This is what. This is an area in which the Kiwis can potentially exploit when they get Limo Song down low because she's, she's not the biggest player. Her biggest attributes are her quickness, her ability to pass and shoot. Every time they get her down in the post, they're going to feed it down there, and she's either got to foul or they've got a high likelihood of getting a score there. If you're the Kiwis, I think that that's the hole that you potentially take advantage of. Faux two. Uh, no two. Two minutes in, and as you expect, right out of the gates here, a tight game. Page patiently waiting for a cutter. She gets Guapo sliced into the bucket. Guapo has it poked away. That'll leave three seconds, three ticks left for Mep to get it up. Page, double team. Off balance, two. Short, Harmon. She tracks down the rebound. That ball is cleared. Purcell getting some tough defense from La Guapa. Purcell will put it up, and her jumper misses to the left. Can't hustle down the rebound. Ball over to Le Bleu. Tiana Clark is in. And Julian Harmon is out. La Guapa setting up. She's got Jay Kuntade on the cut. She puts the shot up. And it goes begging off the iron. 
Quick step from 4-2. She goes 4-1. Guapo, step back. You don't know me like that. Ooh la la. 6-4 game, Purcell. She's toting the mail. She kicks it out to Clark. Clark has just not been able to get her touch. Jekundade, good vision. Finds the cutting Guapo for the easy lay. Here's Clark, she got the step, sneaks the pass over to foe two. She launches it up late in the shot clock, didn't have uh, enough gas to even get that shot to the rim. She will check out and get a breather. Actually, both teams will get a breather. That's the first dead ball after the seven minute mark. TV timeout. Let's listen in on that French huddle. C'est nous qui sommes devant actuellement. On contrôle les votes, on en a trois, on s'en autorise deux jusqu'au prochain time out. Même pas un. Les passer là, ça marche à coup sûr. On va un petit peu plus haut, la place de plus. Allez les meufs. On refait, on fait un deux côtés. Votre France. Allez, deux côtés. Nous sommes en France. Nous sommes en France. Pajay starts. Limosen. She will give it over to Jekundade. Jekundade to all Pajay. Pajay, she said, you got to come back. You got to come back. Or come forward. This team is still developing chemistry. Nobody's new to the game. Two veterans and two players who are younger. Oh, Limosen, she hits the deck. That's because Harmon was not playing friendly. She gets whistled for the offensive foul. Mep gets it over to La Guapa. The Mermaid hands it off to Mep. Pa J. Soft as Terry Cloth. Four lead for France. TC, look at the defense here from Limo Song. She is just pestering her. A little bit too much. A foul's called on the shot. Tiana Clark, she'll have an opportunity at the stripe. The 23-year-old Clark, bright future in 3x3, that is for sure. She's going to connect at the stripe. Only a game separated by three points. Limosun, she'll get it up to La Guapa. That's a pretty shot. Count it. The Duke is good. So France already with a double digit win under their belt over Brazil. They've reached double digits in this game. 533 exactly to go. Pool B action, day two. Did you, uh, did you guys get a chance to watch day one? Hey, it was pretty lit. It was pretty lit, right? Guapo, ball fake, spins around. Uh-uh, way too many steps. Six days in total of action here in Antwerp, Belgium. New fold to the competition this year is a round of 16, only the top seed in each group goes directly to the quarterfinals. The second and third seeds will go to that round of 16. And they will have a, a play-in game to get to the quarterfinals. So we, uh, we added a day. We've got a few more games than what we've had in years past. Up from 96 to 105. That's if my math is good. It's over 100, I can tell you that. 
Clark defense all over her. So the French did their scouting report. They know that Tiana Clark is a capable offensive player, but they have taken her out of this game for the most part. The Mermaid, dime time. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe another time. Layup was missed. I like the way Harmon is playing. She is gritty, tough, all business. No business blouse. Oh, Paget, cross. Oh, you're going to put her in the blender like you got to finish it. Did not finish it. So, Porcel saying move. Somebody cut. I'm going to take it myself. All right, fine. Three. That's another new fold in 3x3 this year. A little bit of a rule change is offensive players cannot have their back to the basket for more than three seconds once they make that first dribble. So once that ball hits the ground, the count begins three seconds, violation. Paget comes around. The mermaid comes down with it, but she stepped on the line. That's going to be white ball. France have reached the top of the mountain when it comes to the Europe Cup two-time gold medal winners. Fotu makes her move. They have not won gold at the World Cup. Fotu gets the tough bucket on the inside. Guapo stepping through. Excusez-moi. She's fouled. Oh, that's on the floor. Guapo thought she should be shooting free throws. I'm not sure. She'll kick it, kick it to Limo Sun. She is quicker than Nestle. 11 7. The thievery nearly from uh, Guapo. She says, That's off me. Good sportsmanship. Vlad wasn't going to miss that call anyway. TV timeout. We're under four now. And we got a four point game. And we got a microphone in that Kiwi's huddle. Let's listen. You have a line of pass. Like give and go. What am I on to run? Who's out? Me? Yeah, you. Come on, right here. Tell me, tell me four points. Come on. Come on. Hey, you heard it in the huddle. It's only four points. 3x3, that's, that's two possessions. That's 24 seconds, and the game could change. La Guapa with the miss. The save ends up in the hands of the enemy. 4-2. This is a game not out of reach for the Kiwis. They know that, uh, you know, this is a winnable game they have to manage it and keep themselves in it 332 to play so plenty of time left they got to execute on offense and they got to lock in defensively and they got to exploit the mismatches i think there aren't many holes on this france team look at that defense Parcel locked up on Guapo. Forced uh, her to step on the line, turn it over. We'll see if New Zealand can take advantage of another opportunity. Harmon thought about the two instead. She's going to drive. Mid-range jumper is a no-go for her. La Guapa comes around, gives it up to the Mermaid. The Mermaid to Nimoson. She misses it, gets it back, but no. Mishandled it. We get a new Wilson in. Somebody will retrieve that one. Hey, hey. 
And Fo Two will go back to work. Fo Two. Oh, nice shoulder shimmy. Lost her on the move. 11 8 now. It's a bucket. Count those two. Fronts respond in a big way. Leads back up to five. Harmon stops just inside the free throw line. And she touches nothing but nine line. Oh, nice bucket on the baseline. Nemo Song getting it done. Yeah, good time for New Zealand to start getting those twos going. And it might be up to four two. They made things difficult on the perimeter for Clark so far. Sharon is caring. There's a lot of love on this French team. Six point advantage for Le Bleu. Clark stepped back. That's the clearest look that she's probably had all day. She couldn't get that shot to fall. Page will kick it. Nimoson to. Oh, wow. Great shot from the mermaid. She's not wet that time. Po two. Making her move. Look at this defense. That is just straight up. Put her in a straight jacket. Can't go nowhere. Amounts to nothing. Page has it tied up. Pass nearly stolen. And Limo couldn't get it to go. No problem. Page will clean up the mess. Warning blue. Delay of game warning. I think they were defending in that semicircle after that made bucket. And a timeout on the floor. One minute left. Seven point lead for France who are eyeing a 2-0 start to their 2022 World Cup campaign. Purcell starts with it. Time's not on the Kiwi side. Harmon missed it close range. They've had a tough time keeping up with the quickness of these French guards. Guapo got the step, but some nice recovery defense there from Purcell, who got a hand in there, knocked it off of Guapo. She'll earn the possession. Marcel orchestrating the offense, top of the key. She's got Clark on the cut, layup. That's where some of your offense has to come as a product of movement. It's a hard ask of players because, again, this game challenges you physically so much with these 12 second shot clocks and continuous play from defense to offense. You know, as an offensive player, it's easy to, to kind of sit and watch so you can catch your breath, but the more you move, the better. Conditioning is key. A little slight fake off the leg of Limoson. Harmon lets it fly. That looked like it was online, but it goes off the iron. Purcell has been a pest defensively. She's really been keeping active hands and poking balls away and disrupting some of this French attack. Not as disruptive as she needed to be, though, because with 12 seconds left, they got eight on the seven on the shot clock. This is going to be a France win. It's just going to come down to what the final score is going to be, and we will find out in right now. That final score, 16 to 10. 
France win again, this time over New Zealand, who will end their first two games winless. They'll go back to the drawing board to have another opportunity to right the ship on Friday. That'll be day four of pool play, but for now, they got to settle for the L. I think my son would say, hold that L. <laughs> for now. France's body of work, good. Here day two. Let's see how they got it done for the second straight time. As I said, Purcell was active on the defensive end, and you can see her setting up Harmon for the layup. As New Zealand struck first, but France would have the last laugh. It was an early 2-0 lead for the Kiwis. There's Purcell reaching in and knocking that one off of Guapo. 4-2, getting a tough score on the inside. But the two-point shot is so imperative in this game. Again, in a sprint to 21. And the Kiwis just did not find very much consistency with their shooting from beyond that arc. It's hard to beat a French nation that can get it done not only beyond the arc, but, you know, they can beat you on the drive. They can beat you off the ball movement, cutting. So they're, um, it's a difficult mix. Difficult mix that proved to, to be the right mix for France as the men's team stand up and show them some love. Again, a 16-10 W for France. Crowd's getting hype. They into it. We love it. 3x3 fans from everywhere here at the venue enjoying the action, not only day one, but here day two. As we are moving right through. We'll get a men's competition coming up. That's after a, a brief entertainment break. We saw Latvia beat China. We just saw France top New Zealand. Next up, the Netherlands men lace them up against Poland. This one will be fun. Two minutes until that game starts. Y'all enjoy the local festivities until then. We got 120 seconds. Stick and stay.
Please. Don't leave me alone, please. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone. I need. I must. No. I have to hear the no. Dutch sound. No. 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 Give me. No. Change. No. I give you my flag. Give me your color. Give me your color. Give me your color. Give me your color. Respect the flag, my man. Okay, what's up? All right, you can see the flags are flying, giving you an indicator of what we got next on the schedule. You got the Dutch flag flying, and you got the Polish flag flying. It is the men of the Netherlands and Poland, both countries' Olympic representatives, and both countries' winners in their first contest. Somebody's gonna have to lose one here. We're gonna find out in just a couple of minutes. Poland picked up a 21-13 win over Japan. The Netherlands come in with three of their four Olympic players from a summer ago. They also come in winners from their earlier contest. As we saw the Orange Lions handled a business against China. They're looking to go 2-0. This, oh. this, this is a sweet matchup right here. This is another one of those circleable, circleable uh, meetings between two squads that are very familiar with each other. You can even say that maybe, maybe a little rivalry is beginning. I don't know, I'd say so. Ain't no love lost between these two. Here come the Poles. Shimon Ardush. Lukas Dudushko. Pavel Pavlovsky. And Prismslaw Zamowski. Zibo, Pavlo, Shimo, and Dede. They come out in the all red, and uh, looks like Zebo cleaned up that little head injury that he had earlier. He's fashion forward, so he didn't want to come out here with the with the mummy wrap no more. He said, "Look, if I'm gonna play, I gotta play in style." You got me very right. All right. I always wonder if uh, when the players tell each other good luck before the game, do they really mean it? <laughs> if you're wishing the best of luck, then that means you're going to lose. <laughs> no. It's called being a good sport. Good luck to both teams. They will lock horns again. Demel Vanderhorst, he had a nice start to day two here. The game winner, as he gave us a one-on-one -on -one lesson in how to make a floater. The game winning shot. And 2018 silver medalist at this very stage. Although we were in uh, Manila for that World Cup 2018. Here we are in Antwerp, Belgium. First time ever. Netherlands the sixth seed, Poland the 11th seed. I bet you're wondering about the head-to-head -head between these two. They have split their international competitions right down the middle, two and two. They played at the Europe Cup quarterfinal. That was in 2021. That was a Polish win. The Netherlands got them at the pool phase of the Tokyo 2020 Summer Olympic Games. They also battled at the Olympic qualifier in Graz, which I also believe was a Polish win. That run at the Olympic qualifying tournament, Netherlands started off 0-2. Looked like they might be dead in the water, but they turned into a new team, 
They beat the United States in their run to claiming their spot at the Olympic Games. Jesse Vaughn, Demel Vanderhorst, Arvin Slachter a part of that squad, as well as Julian Jari. This is that team. Juice squeezes the trigger, but he can't deliver. Not that time. Zebo with Vaughn in front of him. This should be some top level 3x3 right here. I'm not trying to hype it up. Both of these teams winning over their Asian competitors. A 21-16 win for the Netherlands over China. A 21-13 win for Poland over Japan. The Vaughn identity. He's going to fire a blank that time. Pavlovsky gets it down to Day Day. Day Day going at Vaughn and he lost his footing, falls down. Whistle for the travel. Take another look. Vaughn tied him up. Threw off his balance enough to earn the possession for the Orange Lions. Dimes hands it off to Slochter, Arvin Slochter. He left me this morning at the hotel and he left the defense. He shreds the threads from deep and the Netherlands are on the board. No, actually, he was supposed to leave me. They, they said I could ride with him to the venue and I was taking way too long. I knew they were gonna leave me. I expected it. Thanks, Arvin. Day Day falling away. Check out the hook. Dimes, floater, rattles out. Ardouche gives it up to Day Day. Day Day wants to work on Juice down low. But he gets called for three seconds. Got to adjust to the new rules. Not only can you get called for three in the key, you can have a three second violation for having your back to the buck bucket. Devorn identity comes around. He shoots and misses the mark. Ardouche makes his move on Slochter. Slochter, oh, strong move from Shimon. Now Juice going up on Zebo, rattles off. Ardouche making his move. I think that's gonna go off Vaughn's leg. Not quite a full shot clock for the Poles. They got 10 to go. Pablo to Ardouche. Ardouche to Pablo from deep. He says, my bad. He did have to force it up late in the shot clock. Not exactly the result that they'd hoped for in that possession, but we're early in this contest. 2-2. Two -two. And just two minutes in. Vaughn, drive, kick. Dimes does his dance. Is he going to play the air guitar? You know it. String music. He likes the sound of that. 4-2. The Dutch in front. Oh, look at that move. He lost him like baggage claim, and then he sold the bag. Come on, Zebo. You can't you can't give us a move like that and then and then blow the crib. That just let all the air out of our sails. It was like he blew a tire right right at the rim. Oh well. Born. Cross. No sauce. Pablo will give it up. Autoduch. Directing traffic back over to Pablo. Pablo to Day Day, who cannot track it down out of bounds. Zebo is in as, as Pablo checks out. Dimes steps back. He cannot cash it in from two range. Zamoyski. Doing his dance again. Lost the handle, elevates mid-range. Another tough shot. So the longtime staple of the Dutch has been defense. Defense first. And we're seeing flashes of that here early, three minutes in. 
They are locked in and locking up. Slaughterhouse. He goes to the spin move. Plenty of contact. And Didushko is whistled for the foul. Take another look. It definitely gave uh, Slaughter a bump right there. Slaughter also plays for Amsterdam on the Pro Tour. Shout out to my guy, Paul Bell. Long time 3x3 fan. He's watching right now. What's up, PB? He said, go Lions. Well, so far, so good. It's early. Slochter misses at the strike. Pablo Zamoyski with juice in front of him. He cares nothing of it. He leads him to the rim for the score. And Juice can't squeeze the rock. He's going to lose it out of bounds. Back over to the poles. Who are looking to either tie or take the lead here with 6.41 to go. We'll see a TV timeout. Next dead ball situation. Zebo steps back. Didn't put enough protein on the release. Not great spacing on the Dutch team. There's one. Bang outs. Juice dropping the hammer. Nice setup, too, from Vaughn. So there's a display of that athleticism from Julian Jarring. He can thank his homie, Jesse Vaughn, for setting him up. Set him up for a date with the rim. Ardouche denied at the door. Vaughn, the bouncer. He swings it over to Slaughter, but a foul on red before the shot attempt. Five three contest. Game separated by two points, two fouls apiece. Vaughn, oh, he snatched him. Oh and splashed him. He needed some space in the relationship, and he got it. Oh, nice behind the back flip. Can Ardouche make it count? Not that time. Now he's got to try to defend dimes. Vanderhorst with a bullet pass to Slopter. Bucket on the inside. Zebo taking over from the right wing, making his move on Slopter. Puts it up in his face. Not enough steam on that. It's going to be red ball. As we've seen, an official switch. Yasmina Juris is handling the baseline. Marcos Michelides is up top. That ball launched from deep. Pablo, no. Juice quickly swings to Vaughn. Instead of shooting, he shoots straight to the rim. Fast don't lie. Our douche, no. Dimes. A lot of moves. The hook doesn't go. Pablo. I think they're willing to live with letting him shoot from deep. Our douche is fouled on his way to the cup. 9-3, the Dutch. So we got a matchup of World Cup silver medalists with the Netherlands and World Cup bronze medalists with the Poles. 
Sibo, nice move. No choice but to hack him there. Couple more to give for the Dutch. Four fouls, 4.30 to go, six point difference. Sibo bricked it. Hustle to try to save it. Pablo gets to it. What, what effort, but 12 second shot clocks. So they run out of time. Looking around at the faces of the fans here in attendance, they are really enjoying the action. Me too. Oh, Arvin Slochter, he drugged that pivot foot. Wasn't aware of it. Travel is called. Arduduch trying to get free. One-legged release. Oh, Pablo. He had a chance there. Nothing happening. Vaughn coming around. He's got the green light. But a bad brick. Oh, look at that. He shoveled it right over to Slochter. Kick ball. Dimes, he's saying he got him locked up. No visitation rights. Had him behind bars, but the ball will stay with the poles. 10-3 is their offense has really been non-existent. Let's listen. Straight to the cup goes Day Day. Dimes on the way. Couple of ball fakes and a wild shot. Wow, wow, wow. When I'm with you, I like it. it's wild shot. Step back. Zebo got to step up. Day Day. Whoa. These goals ain't loyal. Halfway down and it came out. Watch Vaughn. He's dangerous with that. Oh, Day Day's down. Man down. Put a red nose on him, looking like a clown. Vaughn is going to give the Dutch a big lead. Run that back. I got to see if that was an ankle snatch or not, or if that was because of the contact. Zebo past Vaughn. Vaughn is just going to give it up to Juice this time. Juice couldn't finish the reverse. Artaduch to Pavlovsky. No. Juice will clear it. Over to Vaughn. Vaughn. Ooh. A narrow miss there from two range. He really changes the dynamic of this Dutch team. This is he's an elite shooter. And Arvin Slochter, shooter in his own respect. He gives the ball up. It's Pavlovsky. He's held up by a foul, so that dunk, while it looked nice, will not count. Both teams step aside. We listen in to the Poles huddle. okay? <laughs> So here we are in Antwerp, Belgium, for this 2022 Crelan FIBA 3x3 World Cup. The Dutch against the Poles. We're, we're going to have a world tour in Utrecht this year. Looking forward to that. The Netherlands have been a consistent host in FIBA 3x3 competitions for years now. I 
Can't think to a time that we, we've had a tournament in Poland, at least not during my time. There's Paolo, Pablo right on time with the mid-range J, but it's a dozen to a half dozen. And there's Slochter getting it going from distance. Plush. What a pass there from Zebo. Pablo mishandled it for a moment and misses the fadeaway. Dime is playing with a lot of confidence these days. He draws the foul, a third, only a third, on the poles. But a big lead for the Dutch. All right. Dimes to Vaughn. He's trying to make Day Day dance. Oh, stop it. Vaughn is cooking like Bobby Flay. Slochter to Dimes. He does the honors that time. It's 17-6. A runaway. Looks like W for the Netherlands. It's been a tough run for the Poles in here. They need scoring in a big way. Pavlovsky starts the possession. Artaduce will give it back to Pavlo. Pavlo. Dimes is sticking to him like a spray tan. And Pablo cannot do anything. A strong defensive possession again for the Dutch. They are filling themselves. Vaughn. Dimes was ready for that one to go down. There's JV. Vaughn up top to Jose. Oh, man. A missed chance there. Juice doesn't have any more juice, so he's going to get a breather. Vaughn. That time it rolls off the iron. Our deuce will give it up to Zebo. Zebo, no hesitation. He lets it fly. We're late, so they have to. 17-6 dimes, excuse me. Pardon me. Dimes is showing off for the crowd. I think I like the new Dimes. He's confident. Ardouche scores it. And DeMeo will get the runner to go at the buzzer. It's a rerun of last game. He floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. And this loss is going to sting for Poland. They beat Japan, but they lose to the Netherlands. How about the Orange Lions? 2-0 in their first couple of pool play games. So we got Julian DeBoe standing by courtside. And he selected another member of this Dutch team for the interview. It's Slaughterhouse. It is Arvin Slachter standing by with you. Over to you. Arvin, it's, uh, it's not every day that we see the Polish team limited to seven points. How proud are you of, uh, you know, of your defensive effort? Yeah, I mean, uh, they beat us in the European Championship last year in Paris. So uh, I think we played our whole game with a chip on our shoulder and showed what kind of team we can be. So uh, it's a good day one for us. And uh, on, to, uh, on to the next one. Yeah, it's a, it's a reminder that Antwerp is very close to the Dutch border. There are a lot of fans today. Uh, how does it feel to be on the court and have so many fans cheering for you? Sorry, can you repeat it? It's, uh, it's a reminder today that uh, Antwerp is very close to the Dutch border. It's very close to home. Yeah. There's a lot of fans, a, lot of, a big crowd cheering for you. How does it feel to be on the court being supported by so many fans and, and family? Yeah, man, it's great to be in Antwerp. I mean, it's a lovely city. We love the country of Belgium, even though, you know, in sports, they're always our, our, our rivals. Um, but, you know, I, my, my, my opinion is that only together, you know, you can become stronger and bigger. Uh, it's great to see Belgium and Holland do, do great in 3x3. So uh, hopefully we'll continue that in the future. And uh, we're looking for a lot of more support over here this, this week. All right. Congrats on a great day. Ciao. That is a lot of love. 
showing the uh, the Belgians some love, despite the rivalry that exists between the Dutch and the Belgians. Uh, but I guess when the Belgians aren't playing, then they don't mind cheering for the Dutch, their neighbors to the north. And they had a lot to cheer about in this one. My goodness. They had redemption on their mind. They had not forgot about what happened in Paris in front of the Eiffel Tower last year. And they played like it. Dimes pulls up, shreds the thread. Zebo had a couple of nice moves. And he finishes this one. But the offense was just not there uh, for Poland. There's Juice on his pogos, and then this snatch back. Come here, boy. Jesse Vaughn. Man, he was putting on a display. I think uh, the Netherlands are happy to have him back in a uniform, and look what he does today that. <laughs> he says, where's that top flight security now? Great performance here from Netherlands. Jesse Vaughn is something special. He's doing some good things, and Dimes is playing at a high level, as is Juice and Slochter. They have a good thing going, and they'll be going back to the hotel with a big smile on their face. We won't see them again until Friday, where they look to wrap up group play undefeated. Another team looking to go undefeated are the American women. So they will go up against Austria. We saw the Austrian men go up against the American men yesterday, and we all know the result of that. It was a red, white, and blue. Black and blue. No, it wasn't a beatdown. I'm not going to say that. That was a game that the Austrian men, honestly, they, they, they had a chance. That was one that Austria men felt like they let slip away. Here in the women's competition, we will see how the Austrian women Line up against the powerhouse of the United States with collegiate stars and WNBAers on this team, including Sierra Burdick, already a World Cup champion, with Haley Van Lith, who's a U18 World Cup champion. Lauren Cox, collegiate star, drafted number three overall in the WNBA. It's, it's a lot to like on this American team. And not to forget Ashley Jones. Seven seed, two gold medals already under their belt at this stage, but not with these players. If you want to include the America Cup and the Olympics, that's four golds for the American women who have, they have been the standard. They represented the flag well. Can they continue to represent against an Austrian team that is not to be slept on? Don't hit snooze. Uh, these ladies can play as well. They come out in the all red. Austria suffered an opening loss to Brazil. It took overtime for that game to be decided. But uh, ultimately just could not pull through. And their backs are not against the wall, but they, they want to get a win here. Official Vlad and official Tetzilia. They will hold it down from the officiating position in this game. Austria did not compete in the Olympics. Haley Van Lith did not compete in the Olympics. But she wants to be an Olympian. She's certainly one of the top young stars in 3x3. Certainly a collegiate star and well on her way to the WNBA. Alexia Alex representing this Austrian team. Again, she's going to do battle down low with, with Cox and, and Jones. And we're going to see if she's up for the test. This American team is very much pick your poison. They are formidable playing down low, whether it be Jones or Burdick or Cox. And they are certainly good at the guard position as well. Haley Van Lith, she's a magician out there with that rock in her hand, inspired by the great Kobe Bryant, who spent a lot of time with her and helping her mold her game. Her father's 
Uh, certainly, he's been the, probably the most important figure in helping grow her hoop game all together. And she defends up top to start this second game for the Americans. Wildbacher gives it up. Nice behind the back move by Newman. That two is launched, but he got to be more careful. Stepped out of bounds. So Van Liffel started Jones, working just inside the two point arc. She steps through. She's got the right flavor on the scoop. Nice move, but a foul prevents the make. So that means that Alexia Susan Alesh, 23 year old, making her first international appearance on this Austrian team, will shoot one. And she's gonna knock down one. Cox redirects Sierra Burdick on a beeline to the rim. She's defended pretty well. Out of bounds off of Red. CB. They have four to work with here. Haley Van Lith. Pocket pass is poked away. That's going to leave less than a second for the Americans to get a shot up. So that means that Van Lith is going to have to heave this up with hopes that it touches the rim and they get another possession. We'll see. She steps aside, front rimmed it, no rebound. Rebound goes to Red. 1-1, one, one. Wildbacher making her move quick on the baseline, threw it in reverse. Burdick steps in, fades, misses. The vet can't track it down. Out of bounds, off of the Americans. In case you didn't know, in case you're new to 3x3, did you miss the Olympics last summer? If you uh, did watch, you saw the American women slice through the competition like hot butter. Uh, meantime, talk to the hand. The ears ain't listening. Nice defensive timing to block that one out of bounds from Alex, but I was gonna say, oh, you can't do that to a Cox. She's lengthy, six foot four. Uh, but the American women won gold. That iconic and legendary accomplishment for the American team who's long dominated in the five on five ranks. Nine gold medals for the women, 16 for the men in the modern era of the Olympics. So USA is known to dominate round ball. 3x3, uh, not exactly, but they're certainly one of the one of the top countries, uh, thanks in large part to the women. The men's team did not earn a spot in the Olympics last year because they lost the Olympic qualifiers. A memorable L to the Netherlands is what prevented them from going. 2-2 game here. But shout out to Kelsey Plum and Alicia Gray, and Jackie Young and Stephanie Dolson, who brought it home for Team USA. Lockdown defense, wild shot, but they take it right back. And Van Lith with the thievery herself. Van Lith, tough shot, Burdick comes down with the rebound. Offensive foul, she's called for dropping that shoulder. That's what Vlad is saying. Burdick was just trying to clear a little space. She was feeling a little claustrophobic. Can't do it like that. Gasolina. Wilbacher coming around. She's going to find Fuchs Robotin. Foxy Robotin finds the bottom of the net. Here's Jones. Put on the brakes, but couldn't break her off. The ball finds its way back to Jones. Jones to Burdick. Pull up, Jay. That stroke was broke. Out of bounds off of. The Americans, two and a half minutes in. It's a five to two lead for Austria.
Wilbacher coming around. The Austrians trying to pull off an upset. That is a nice pass, but it is not finished. You've got to finish your dinner on the dish. So the lead stays where it's at. Haley Van Lith will open things up from the logo. Van Lith, she gives it up. She's going to swing left. Wow. Stand in front of her is like trying to grab the wind. Good luck with that. Van Lith will have it again. She will kick it and get it back. Sets her feet. That's a good defense there. Recovery there from Alice who got a fingernail on it. Now she will go down to the block, and Newman will make her move. Good defense there from Van Lith. Van Lith gets a look, but back rims it. First TV timeout. Breaking action, and let's listen in to Austria. Kyle Montgomery, aka the voice in your ear. We are rolling through day two. It's a six to three game. Austria in front of the United States. Cox, you can see that she went down and uh, she's holding that left ankle. And that certainly got the fans on the edge of their seats. And she, she tumbled down almost immediately. Maybe we'll get a chance to look at the replay and see just how that happened. I think she stepped on a foot. Well, look again, and you can see the feed, and not exactly, at least from, from my screen. And now we get a better look here. Yeah, just kind of a awkward collision that uh, has Lauren Cox down. Such a dominating figure on this American team. And certainly hoping that she's going to be okay. She's going to limp off of the court for the moment. And we'll obviously keep an eye on her situation. But she is, uh, again, such a key piece to this American squad. A number three WNBA draft pick, six foot four. Dominator, also Red Bull USA Basketball 3X National Champion. Let's see how it plays out. No sub for the Americans for the moment. It's Burdick. She goes to the cup. Foul is called. Cox is going to actually leave the court for a moment. Again, we'll keep you updated on what her situation is going to be. Coach Kara Lawson is looking on. Their entire USA basketball staff, Jay Demings and company. Alex scores on the interior. Austria leading USA by three. Van Lith finishes with the reverse. She parallel parks it. Two point advantage. Oh, she sold the basket. Missed layup. Got to have the gimmies. Cox is back. Wow, just like that. She is tougher than overcooked steak. <laughs> right back in the game. And she's ready to go. Jones, long on the two. Oh, water from the right wing. Jones representing Iowa City in a big way. No defense to be had, though. Austria still leads this by one. They played a really good game through the first half of this. Jones putting another one up. Taste the rainbow. 
scrumptious. 9-8. Fuchs Roberton, what a tough drive. Misses the mark. Cox comes away. Jones, she's got the hot hand. She's cooking. Burdick trying to get in on the action. She misses. Cox, give me that, and you take this. It's a bucket. That's another easy lay for the Austrians, so the Americans really got to step it up on the defensive end. I don't think offense is ever going to be a problem for them, but Austria's had the answer so far. Jones locked up. They won't let her out, no. Shot clock violation. Did y'all like that, that song? Sometimes I just like to sing, whether it's good or not. Nine, nine, ten. It's a good game. That's all that matters. Fuchs Robertson. Oh, snuck it out to Newman. Newman got cops in the air, and nobody in the lane to defend that lay. Ten, ten game. Van Lith doing her dance. Couldn't get the stroke. Jones couldn't get the rebound. That's going to be red ball. 10-10 deadlock. Four fouls on the Americans. Three fouls on the Austrians. Here we go. Fuchs Roberton. She's going to the baseline. Long arms of Cox deflects the shot. Alish, no. She gets denied at the door. Burdick not handing out any VIP passes. You can't come in here. You don't know nobody. Just over four minutes to play. <laughs> Burdick, oh, nearly threaded the needle to Van Lift. That was just out of reach. Van Lift will check out. Cox is in. Clocks are out of Flower Mound, Texas. Verdict out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I lived there for a while. Nice pass attempt. So 10-10, it stays. Let's eavesdrop on the Austrian huddle. USA starts on the right side. Van Lith with the touch. Newman doing her dance. Get that out the nets. She put it right between her eyes. And now Jones. Oh, that ball comes back to her. She cannot put the cookie in the cup. As Austria leads by one. The Americans beat New Zealand 19 to 14. With 324 left, they find themselves down by a single score. Fuchs Robertin trying to give him a two ball. Count it. She's got reservations for two. Burdick drops it to Cox. Cox held up by a foul. I was not in the process of the, of the shot. No, neither team in jeopardy of uh, the penalty at the moment. Four fouls apiece in a three-point lead for Austria. Van Lith coming around. That she's helped into that foul. Took a little shove there. Oh, Haley made her touch Mother Earth. Catch the vapors. She disappeared like the Foot Clan. What in the... That was teleportation. Van Lith.
turning around, misses. CB underneath. It's back to a one-point game. Take another look. That, I haven't seen that much. It was like the, the ground left her. And Haley Van Lift wasn't the only thing that left her. She, oh, my Jeebus. It's 14-13, still. Cox setting up on the block. Van Lith looking to do some damage from two range. But these goals ain't loyal. Oh, Jones tracks it down. Bounce pass. Van Lith recovers it. She's surrounded by Austrians. Three in the key. Too much time. Fuchs Robinson will stole. Oh, they throw it away. So the Austrians not on the same page there. Trying to pull off what would be a big upset. I don't think there are many people who are obviously not American who are cheering for the USA here in this crowd. No basket, three second call. Here we go. Under two minutes to play in this one. What a dime pass. Man, bounce pass. The setup to Newman from Fuchs Robotin gives Austria a 15-13 edge. One possession game. The Americans can tie with a two ball, obviously. And no need to panic. 12 second shot clocks in this game at 3x3. That means they're going to get opportunities. Oh, Van Lith had one. And Van Lith gets the foul call. You can certainly tell that Team USA and feeling that pressure a little bit here. This is an adverse situation. And a very, very close game against Austria as Van Lith puts it through. Back to a one-point game. Cox with the steal, but they may miscommunicate. I think Burdick thought that Cox was going to clear it herself. Instead, Cox tried to quickly get it to Burdick. And we saw the result. Austria trying to add to their one-point advantage. They want some cushion here with a minute 30 to play. Newman. With Jones defending, the lay is missed. There's a foul underneath, count it. To the hard way. As Austria takes a two point lead off the miss. Look at the rebound from Newman, who has the awareness to turn around and go off the window. Can she make this a three point game? No, she cannot. Burdick skies for the board. Stays a one possession contest. Cox will get it back to the vet. Burdick back down low to the post office. She's going to deliver. Fuchs Robertson with a buck to play. Burdick trying to stay in front. She couldn't do it, didn't move her hips quick enough. That's a six foul on the USA. Next foul on either team. Two free throws will be the result. There's only a matter of seconds remaining in this game. I think that, was that off red? That is. I think that since we're under two minutes, Austria wanted to exercise their right to challenge. And they want to take a look at this and see if that actually was off of red. So Ref Live will go to the scores table and we will go inside the Austrian huddle.
There's another one of those beauty shots that we talk about in the TV world. The 2-0 American men's team over there taking out, checking out the action. Coach Joe Lou and there's Kara Lawson. You see her there. James Parrott, Disco Damo. Swagged out with Kadani. They want to see how this thing plays out. Me too. Burden to the hole. 16 up. Let's get it. Burdick locking up on Newman. Cox confiscates the board. Burdick over to Haley Van Lith. Van Lith, she's sizing up the defense. Pulls up mid-range. Cash me outside. How about that? 17-16. USA's up. Cox throws that back like a greatest hits. 15 ticks to go. Oh, and double dribble called. Big turnover on Austria. So the scenario is this. USA lead by one. They got possession, 13 seconds to go. So Austria has decided they want to foul, but Haley Van Lip is out of there. Verdict is fouled, a seven. And I don't think a bad foul on Austria because now it's really all up to if Burdick can convert at the free throw line. If she makes only one of these two, they'll have nine seconds to potentially try to tie here. If she makes both of these, uh, that, that's all she wrote. Oh, the first of two is missed. So Burdick needs to make a second or she leaves the door slightly open. We'll see. She makes the second. The only hope for Austria is to knock down a two. They got time here, six seconds, no need to rush it. You don't shoot one when you need two. And I'm not sure what the plan was for Austria there, but they needed a two to tie. They take a one and they come up empty either way. USA, they survive. A close test. 18-16-W. As they were pushed to the limit by the Austrians. A win is a win is a win. Carol Lawson's group will go back to the hotel and enjoy an unbeaten day of action. And we will, meantime, enjoy this interview coming up between Julian DeBove and Sierra Burdick. Ju, take it away. Sierra, uh, first question, how, how fast was the heart beating on those free throws? Uh, it was a close game. I mean, that's the fun of 3x3. That's what makes it exciting. You know, it's going to come down to the last two minutes. We know that every single game. So I felt like we kept our composure. We knew if we just kept playing, you know, to the final buzzer, we'd have a good shot at it. Yeah, it was a very, very close game. What do you think it says? I mean, the fact that the team was down for most of the game, but you came back. How much do you think it says about the character and the personality of the team? I mean, I think we're tough. I think we're going to keep fighting no matter what. You know, we got a tough group. It's just going to keep battling, you know, even when things aren't going our way. So I thought we did a good job of just staying composed, especially when Lowe went down. Thankfully, she was able to come back. But we just stayed together and kept fighting. A win is a win. Congratulations. Thanks. Hey, free BG, baby. Free BG. And at the end of that, you, she said free BG. She's speaking of Brittany Griner, who is uh, still being held captive, unfortunately, uh, given the conflict with uh, Russia. So a political statement from Sierra Burdick, and the USA make a statement on the court that uh, they are a tough team. And even when the chips are down, they do not give up. Haley Van Lift battling the entire way. They got a scare as Lauren Cox suffered what looked like it was an, going to be an ankle injury. She left for about 60 seconds and came back, continued battling. How about the game from Ash Jones? She was getting money like an invoice from deep. Back-to-back -back twos. How about Austria in this game, though? They were impressive. We're in line to potentially shock the United States. They battled into the very end. And it wasn't always pretty. 
she wasn't ready. Quick move from Haley Van Lith. And some key defensive stands from the Americans that helped them earn this victory. They got the veteran leadership from Burdick. They got the support from their American contingent and they take it by two. We will get a brief breather before we get back to the action. As the day continues, we are about five minutes away from our next contest uh, where we will see Latvia and Japan. That's the last game of our second session. That's the men's contest, Group C. Again, starting at 55 after, so only a few minutes away. Stick around, more 3x3 is coming.
Nice job, gentlemen. That reminds me of something that you might see double dutch, uh, not double dutch, but uh, jump roping in New York City. It's big up there. Latvia and Japan. They are on deck. So we saw Latvia beat China earlier, a team that they also beat in the Olympic Games. Uh, they also met Japan twice. This is the team that they, well, not the full team. Two members of that Japanese team that Latvia beat twice, only by three points. So Japan is, their recent history would indicate that they can play this Latvian team tough. Uh, China did not play Latvia tough. That ended almost as soon as it started. 22 to six. Final. That's what they're coming off of. And they got Batman back. Carlos Lasmanis representing Latvia with Norse Miesis, Agnes Chavars, and Arturs Strelniks. They come out in the white this time. They're going to get warmed up and stretched up over the sideline and watch their opponents now take the court. Team Japan. The Asian sensations led by the worm, Tomoya Ochai, playing in his fifth World Cup. Very few players in the history of the game have played at this level that many times. He wants it to pay off with some type of precious metal around his neck. They got to start getting it going against some of the top dogs, and they don't get much bigger than the Latvians. So they'll get it uh, warmed up, head to head. Latvia has dominated. They beat them at the World Cup 2019, the same World Cup that Latvia ended up taking a silver medal. I mentioned the two wins at the Tokyo Summer Olympics, pool phase and the quarterfinal. That's what ended Japan's hopes of advancing. You better believe the Japanese have not forgotten about that. You can never forget about the maze. He will leave you lost. Norris Miezis at 29 years old. He's already building a Hall of Fame career with the Latvians. And he's got his partner in crime back with Batman and against the worm. Japan, strong defensive team. But it's more than just about individual ability. You got to find a remedy for the system that Latvia plays with. And, you know, watching them emerge into a 3x3 power from 2017 where they won their European championship, they really picked up the nuances of 3x3. And so many battles against the Serbian teams on the Pro Tour and the national events over the years. Their passing is down to a science. And they've got the individual skill to, to match with Miezis at the top of the key, rocking number one. I call him the maze, but I almost started to call him the matrix because he's the one now, especially on the pro tour. Step back two. Started the last game with a two, starts this one with a miss. Oh, pokes it away. He will take your property and he will drop dimes like a coin collector. They collect their first score Miezis to Las Manas. Suffocating defense as Tomoya Ochai elevates baseline jumper. No. Chavars does what he does. Rebound. Miezis. All net, all wet. Four zip right out of the gates for the Latvians. Yasuoka to the worm. Oh, he tunnels his way to the rim, but he misses the crib. Can't do that. Batman lets it go. It's a no. And a foul white. Batman, not only MVP of the previous season's Pro Tour, but also lifting Latvia to a gold medal at the Olympics last summer. The shot that none of us will ever forget, his two-piece to win it over ROC. 
Serbia took bronze. Latvia takes gold, and ROC took silver at those uh, Olympic Games. Strelnik finds himself all alone. He's got reservations for one now. Latvia five, Japan zero. Whoa, nice crossover. Foul on Chabarts. Agnes will stay in. Lasmanis will check out. He's had a heck of a trip. Just left Chicago. Playing with the aliens. Took a quick flight over here to Antwerp. Well, actually to Brussels. Then to drove here to, to Antwerp. And now he's hooping. Hey, that Wilson is mine. Miezis takes it. Get off of me. That's an offensive foul. No shoving. Ball over to Japan as they will attack now. Fujitaka will start it. Ochai finds Yasuoka open. He will kick it out to Fujitaka. Fujitaka on the drive. Gets to the top. Cannot finish the layup. Miezis, they double dared him. He gets the double dip. That's going to give Latvia uh, what I thought would have should have been their seventh point, but, I, but the scoreboard says six. I could be wrong. Batman. He's on the move. He re releases the two. Off the miss, there's a foul underneath. And Strelnik's found himself surrounded by a couple of Japanese players. He's the one that gets whistled for the foul. Japan losing 13 to 21 to Poland in their earlier game. And I mentioned what Latvia did to China. Sadohara starts the ball movement, step through, scoop. No. Just missed it. A chance for a two point play at first, but instead it's going to be just a free throw attempt. An opportunity for Japan to just get on the board. They want something, something to build on. And that one trickles in. Japan has gotten on the board. Foul red. Trying to defend that high pick action. Chavars was setting the ball screen. They do that beautifully. Lasmanis will come around. The lefty long. Ochai to Sada Hara. Oh, what a shot. It's a no look scoop. Miezis to Lasmanis. Blue to crib. Miezis missed it. He gets it back, though. It makes good. Sado Hara. Last game before we take a session break. Chavar's breaking them off some proper. Count it. Two. Fowler Lasmanis. So while Latvia do lead 9-2 right out of the gates as we head into our first TV timeout, they do have six fouls. That means they have no more to give. What they got to talk about over there? All right, back to it. Ochai, Yasuoka, making his move. Back to the worm, the worm. Nice move, but the shot was wild. The maze, taking him on a journey, crossing him right to left through the contact. He's going to earn a trip to the, to the line. As he walks it off, Norris Miezis. He's going to step up. Miezis finished with 61 points 
in those Tokyo Olympic Games. He's going to add a point to his resume and give Latvia a 10-2 advantage. Nice ball movement here from Japan. If they can start knocking down some shots, they're going to have a chance. But the goal is to put the round thing in the round thing. One is leather, one is iron. Fujitaka with Batman defending. Chavars pokes that away. He's contending that it's off red. But they're going to say off white. Nine seconds to shoot as Fujitaka will start it the same way he just did. Swings it right. Fujitaka sets the screen. That's great movement and an outstanding pass. They are not finishing at the rim. Lasmanis neither. Chavars, and he's got a magnet for that 3x3 ball. And he finishes with the nice layup, showing the touch off the glass. Latvia looking like they're headed for another blowout. We'll see, it's a nine point advantage. Batman has left the bat cave. Bruce Wayne ain't got nothing on this Batman. 12-2. Oh, Chai, no look dish. Strelnik's now, he's on the move. Pocket pass, right to Chavars. Lead stays at 10. Just over five to play. Fujitaka to the worm, moves past Las Manas, drops it off. Fujitaka gets it back. Chavars with the board. He's cleaning the glass like the Board of Health. He is always present for the rebounds. Leader on the world tour in rebounds last season. It's like that crown is always going to go to either him or the manimal, Serbian, Mihailo Vasic. <laughs> Back to it we go. Lasmanis Miezis, plenty of space. After the miss, oh, scrum for the ball, leads it back to Miezis. Miezis drops it off, Las Manas, tough score on the left. He's got the touch like a masseuse. And an offensive foul called. That time is a miss from Las Manas. Strelnix landed with it, but he landed out of bounds. Yasuoka to, to the worm. Strelnix, a top level defender. He forces the pass and another miss. Japan with just three points over six minutes in and another foul on Japan as they're starting to catch Latvia in the foul category. Latvia with no more to give. Japan with just one more foul to give before we're in the penalty situation. Pool C, game five. B and C in action all day long. A and D back on the floor tomorrow. Strelnix, he's pushed while shooting. Artur Strelnix. Great addition to the Latvian core. Started off as spot duty. Now he's taking on a regular role with Edgar Krumens injured. He's going to take the cookie and put it in the cup. Not a problem. 
and an offensive foul. So Japan is they're shooting themselves in the foot and not giving themselves much of an opportunity to, to get a win here. They trail it by 12. Make that 13. Three fifty and counting. The worm couldn't handle the pass. Miezis decides to give it up, lost it in to Batman. He knows what to do with it. Yasuoka with Miezis in front. He's going to try to move, make his move, and foul is then called on Miezis. Take a look. Reached in there at the end. He was thinking the travel should have been the call. A 14 point lead. What are the Latvians doing right? Maybe they can tell us. Let's listen. Shooting two. Is Rayuto Yasuoka. The Olympian. Cashes in on the first of two. But that only makes it a 13. Make that a 12 point difference. Chavars, he lets one fly. Mr. Rock in the building. DJ Lass. He's in his bag. So are the Latvians. Minus the high foul count. I'd say that uh, Latvia's been playing as close to perfect as, as it gets against their two Asian competitors. Give and go. Drops it off. Miezis. Puts his team within three of walking out of here with another win before the limit. Norris Miezis returns to the free throw line, that is. He will shoot a couple of them. That one finds the bottom of the net. Next one will give the Latvians game point. Money. And one more score for Latvia. And this is going to be uh, the end of this. Fade away. Uh-uh. Miezis with the ball in his hand. He hands it off to Las Manas. Did that not look like the Olympic two-piece? They reached 22 in both of their games. Lalise, Latvia, they got it going out here in Antwerp. 2-0. They hardly broke a sweat in their first contest against China. This one doesn't come quite as quickly, but it is a runaway win for Norris Miezis, Carlos Las Manas, Agnes Chavars, and Artur Strelnik. 22 to 5? Man, my math was off. This was worse than the first one. <laughs> Lavia's rolling. Let's roll over to Julian DeBove, who's getting set up right now, courtside, with the maze himself, Norse Miezis. Ju, over to you. Norris, uh, 22 to 6 against China, 22 to 5 against. I can hear, sorry. Norris, uh, 22 to 6 against China, 22 to 5 against uh, Japan. You didn't want to lose too much time on the court today. Talk about how well it went for you today. I think it's a big emotion for us players that uh, we can again share the court with Los Manis. And we, by myself, that I can say that I'm happy that he's back. And uh, I really enjoy playing against him. It's a big fan. Fun. Of course, but uh, oh, 
I need to be careful. I, I will stay here. And uh, of course, uh, we, we fight hard in defense, and uh, it's main thing. We need to keep doing it, this stuff. Yeah, Norris, you've already won the Olympics, you won the Europe Cup, the World Cup is something that is missing in the trophy cabinet. Talk about how much of a motivation it is for you. We were talking like, like last two, three weeks about this, that uh, we are missing one piece and uh, we will fight for this and uh, we, we won this, of course. All right, congrats. See you in two days, man. Thank you very much. Yep, that is, uh, that is an easy body of work. I'm not saying the job is easy, but they just, they just made it look easy. Their opponents combined for 11 points in two games. Uh, meantime, they score 44. That's a pretty wide margin of victory. Um, you don't have to be good at math to know that. Latvia is in they bag. Talked about the benefit of having Las Manas back on the court again. Obviously, the motivation of, of trying to earn that ever-elusive World Cup gold medal is the only thing that they have not accumulated over the last five years. And Las Manas is back just to do that. They are hitting on all cylinders. It is full steam ahead for the Latvians. Tough buckets, easy buckets. It starts with defense, and that's where uh, they really shine. Opens up their offensive game where it's hard to match them. So 22 to 6 and then 22 to 5. The Latvians can go back to the telly, kick their feet up for a bit, and get ready to get back in action on Friday where they will try to earn the top spot in their group and go straight to the quarterfinals. We are also going to kick our feet up for a moment because we are going to take another session break. You can see it right there. Our session three is going to be begin at 17.05. So we got almost an hour before we get back to 3x3 action from here in Antwerp. We will see you all then. In the meantime, peace out for the moment.